it's Rooster here and today we're gonna look E50 German tier 9 medium tank and I'm just gonna go straight off the bat it's a great tank I love it it's the most fun I've played with tier 9 so far so just go get it and forget about everything else well obviously that wouldn't be a much of a review so I probably need to do something more to convince you guys about this tank I don't have that much you know bad to say about this so I don't know if it's so much of a review or is it just a buff for E50, but uh, we just have to kind of like deal with that. And uh, before going for in the further detail, uh, I will say that if you want to watch this review in Finnish, there's a link in the description which leads to the video where this tag is reviewed in Finnish. So you you don't need to try to struggle to understand my uh, English speaking in a Finnish style, so you, you can just watch it in Finnish if you're a Finnish uh, speaking person. But yeah, let's just go forward. Uh, this tank looks familiar if you look at E75, and why? Because these tanks are like sisters. They basically have the same hull. It looks pretty much like the E50 when you look at the E75. They basically have the same hull or the same chassis and that's in real life they did have pretty much the, of the same technology used in those two tanks and E50 was kind of like they didn't have that much armor than the E75 so it's kind of like mini E75 because it pushes the term of medium tank pretty far actually because it's way heavier than some of the heavy tanks in the game I did mention that I love this tank and it's sweet to play, but it's only sweet if you go and max it because in stock when you research it, it's going to be painfully to take this tank to tier 10 matches. And the reason is you get this 8.8 .8 gun with the Panther 2 and it's not that great in tier 10s, which you are going to be facing a lot in this tank and obviously it's significantly inferior all the stock parts on this gun so what you want to do is you want to get the tracks because you get a more low limit you want to get the engine for the 200 extra horsepowers and the radio you get the signal range is just way better and the turret is obviously way better than the stock one if you just look at the stats it comes with the two tier nine guns and the reason I haven't researched this 8.8 .8 because I'm pretty sure I'm not gonna use it it has the faster fire rate it has the faster stock penetration but the alpha is just way worse than and the other one and the aiming time is just horrendous 2.9 compared to this one which is the top gun on a 50 this has slow fire rate a bit smaller penetration on stock values but the alpha is substantially better the aiming time is way better and the dispersion is 0.3 which is good and when paired up with coded optics and a view range of 400 it's pretty obvious if you don't need with that gun you don't need gun laying drive so you're good to go with a different setup with equipment which I have word steps coded optics and obviously a rammer so let's just go over the stats real quickly and I show you some bits of the armor so we can go to the actual gameplay you guys see this beast in action so 1750 hit speed point which is more than enough with the armor to keep you alive in tier 10 matches if you know to angle your armor this tank can bounce shots when used correctly so you should be just fine the view range 400 as I mentioned it's good for medium tank so you can use that to your advantage but I don't use that much of the advantage because I usually I am pretty aggressive with this tank as I'm a lot with other tanks the average DPM almost 2500 which is good I already talked about the gun so let's just leave that be in that setting but the depression of the gun is minus 5 to the front elevation plus 20 but I think I remember correctly if you use the gun just shoot to the sides you can get more depression on the gun so you need to work around the ridge lines a bit wiggle your tank around but you will do just fine turret traverse speed 29 uh, not that bad uh, traverse speed 32 so you need to like combine those two when trying to keep up with the moving target 
targets uh, horsepower to ton ratio is 14.31 it doesn't sound too great but it doesn't struggle nearly that much in the hills as you would think with that number and as I, I think it feels sluggish in, in up if going up the hills but it doesn't seem that bad speed wise and you get around the match pretty good top speed 60 front 20 going backwards I would say the top speed is 60 ish would be the right term but that's okay so here's the beast let's just swirl around a bit and look how all actually the one thing about this tank is it looks freaking amazing so it's always good to go I out looking good and getting some kills for your team so let's go see the armor and we can go to the gameplay after that so here we are at the tanks.gg and I'm just gonna look through the armor of E50 real quickly so we can go to the gameplay. Obvious weak spot for this tank is the lower plate which is 100 millimeters thick and it's around 55 to 57 sloped and as we would look the E50 straight from front it's about 175 to 180 and top of that in the armor so there's obviously in these matches where this tank goes there are tanks that can penetrate you to the lower plate straight front so you need to take account for that the upper plate is much better it goes around 260 to 70 with the armor as it is 150 millimeters thick and it's angled around 54 to 57 at some points around here the turret itself 190 pretty much all around but there are guns in this game in tier 9s and 10s and even in tier 8s with premium rounds that can go through if they can you know fire flat on this armor right here these cheeks are pretty much bouncy 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 but i have been shot to these also so you need to take care of that obviously the tank has a cupola which is rather big and uh, there's also some penetrations of rooms there it's not perhaps not that bad as you would think in E75 or in King Tiger but you need to remember that you have this kind of just this sort of stuff in the top of your tank and the E50 is quite tall for a medium tank so you need to take account that for you might want to angle this tank a bit when facing enemies and you get like sick values on the upper plate and pretty decent on the lower plate but you need to remember that there's sharp angles here that are easily penetrated and if you angle your tank too much uh, the side will be your weak point at hull and even in the turret so if you just go flat here the armor is 80 millimeters thick it's not angled so a lot of guns will penetrate you through here so it's important to keep that tank moving and not giving a sitting target for your enemies to shoot at turret is 80 also and the backside is 80 it does a bit slope there but it doesn't help you that much obviously the top of the tank is just paper and you don't rely on that on any case if it rains too hard the water will get in so you need to take account that for it too so there's the armor for you so let's go actually see some gameplay so here we are at fjords it's a tier 9 game so it's a great game for e50 and what i want to do is i want to head up north as soon as i can and i got like amx 5120 coming with me and also got amx 30 coming with me at least and the plan is to get over the A8 to actually have some looks over the valley and see what we can do and as you can see it's it's pretty a bit strong it looks like it's struggling you know in the hill but it actually does pretty decent speed up the hill but I, I don't know I just get the feeling that it is uh it's sluggish it, it might be just me uh, the, the the equipment i'm using i got worth stabs i got coated optics and i got the rammer and i don't use the enchanted gun laying drive because of the aim time is so good and i have just you know the basic consumables on this tank so it's just like repair kit med kit and a extinguisher and I just try to get as fast as I can to the corner. I'm actually following the aim is 30. I'm just, I'm 
just going straight to the same spot that he does or she, we don't know um, but uh, we're just gonna head there and try to have some good looks on that valley because there are already loads of enemy tags that has to be spotted and I'm just gonna go right in this corner and start having some looks to the valley and uh, we have A44 that is giving a, a glimpse of himself to us Amex connects but I don't uh, probably hit the uh, ground in front of that tank as somebody is shooting and Amex 30 just finishes off with the A44 and there's like Type 61, T54 and a Black Prince which we can see and I'm just gonna peek around and there's a King Tiger and he's just too slow going backwards after finding that it's a tier 9 medium tank that is shooting at him uh, KV4 pops into map and there's also SU-12244 somewhere around there and a Centurion so I'm just gonna scanning around and I see that I can take a peek at Centurion and he peeks around and as soon as I connect he disappears from my uh, sight and there's also T43 going around there I'm just gonna scan so if I can have a look at him but I don't have any looks at the moment the Centurion seems to be the only thing I can shoot I don't know where that went but there's like Tiger King Tiger and Love is behind that rock to my right so I'm just trying to scope some targets here I don't, I don't want to go like too hard and get myself into trouble which is just what our AMX 5120 is doing and we just need to go help him out so we don't lose that French autoloader because this T54 has moved forward and is shooting the AMX so I'm just, what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna rush and try to help this AMX any way I can King Tiger is gone I'm just gonna go around this lobe and behind him so he, he does not much he can do with the tier 8 you know premium at this point because everything is so much slower than our tanks and Love is finished and I see T54 going at the same spot basically where the Centurion is so I need to take care of those probably next and there I'm heading and I'm scanning and I find this T43 just in front of me thank you the Centurion would have to be next because he is on low health so we need to get that gun out of this fight and 110 does that so thank you the next target would be T54 because he's, uh, he's, uh, it's a bad one to face so he connects pretty well to my tank I lose an ammo rack I need to repair that I see KV4 just you know lying around there I take a blind shot I hope it hits and uh, I might just want to try to farm on this KV4. I take another shot. I don't connect, but soon I need to go help out that 110 with the 54, and I managed to take that tier 9 Russian medium tank out of the game. I'm just scanning for this KV4, trying to get some uh, some shots. I connect pretty well, and I bounce his shot as I uh, angle my tank. And I see that there's Jack Tiger and Type 61 behind that rock, and that KB4 is still there. Try to take a shot, doesn't connect, but the AMX is doing a good job cleaning up after me. And uh, what I want to do is I want to go and grab this Jack Tiger here because it's pretty dangerous if you let it let it be. I shoot the tracks, but for some reason I take a time to. Uh, go forward so he repairs the track I'm just gonna rush him he, he will bounce me and I'll just go around and put some shots into this uh, in his side hopefully just takes ages to reload and I get a good shot and the AMX gets him away from the game as soon as he tries to uh, turn towards me and try to reach the T34 but the Amex is just faster. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do a sweep around because I want to make sure but uh, I'm just gonna spoil it for you there's nothing here so I'm just gonna speed up this process here so it doesn't like 
make this video unnecessary long because the ISA and the Black Prince are right over there and our guys are going through the cap and I just decide to go this way and our 50 ton gets rid of the IS-8 and sees the Black Prince. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to try to rush to the scene to actually save our 50 ton. I get a good shot on Black Prince but he finishes the 50 ton so it was a failure on my part. But I get the revenge so GG guys let's go see some stats. So here are the stats for that game. It wasn't, you know, anything epic, but it was a good display of E50 being the top tier in the game. So what we got is we actually got like 28,000 credits with that tank. We fired 21 times, hit 17, penetrated 13. We did a bit over 4,000 damage blocked almost the same amount as our hit points, spotted only one vehicle, moved around about three clicks and the match only lasted for seven minutes. And the team wise, uh, I was at the top and the buddy I had along with me, the AMX-30, he was close second. So we actually did pretty good, almost managed to get the half of the enemy team just between the two of us. So that's good. So that was basically what what E50 can do with being a top tier. But let's go see a matchup where E50 is facing a lot more tier tens than in this one. So here we are at the Arctic region. It's a tier 10 match, so we're not that top tier anymore. What I want to do is I want to go north and I want to stretch out this flank as much as it is possible to do. And that's usually the, the thing I want to do. I don't want to hang back A4 and 5 or B4, A5 area. This, you know, this hill you see in front of me. I didn't want to hang around there because I want to stretch out to the A2, B1 area and make the enemy team feel as uncomfortable as possible. But keeping that in mind when you do that, you always need to be aware of the situation. I mean, it's a good spot, but if you got, if you see like many tanks at this point, and you try to go there to the right, it's gonna be difficult. But what I see is, I, I see a T71, I should take a pot shot at him, and it it's actually connects, so it's good. And I try to take command of this position here, and I see a 268 going for the sniping position, and I should try to get a, a shot to him, but he's, uh, he's fairly safe there. And I just take a bot shot and I start scanning around because uh, he spots me. And I start scanning around and moving around to see if there would be like other enemy tanks. But what I too do notice at this point that our 1390 is actually sneaking around there. And I'm it's a, trap. a bit too bold here because I'm exposing myself to the 268 if he pops up. So I'm just gonna wait that 1390 to get a spot for me, hopefully, because it seems that he made it safely around there, so there's not too much enemy tanks guarding, and I take a decent hit from 268. I actually, uh, I was lucky because he was shooting HE, and 1390 is going all in. He, wanna, he wants to take that 268 out of the game. And when we see an opportunity, we just need to go help him. It's uh, me and a awful panther are just rushing into the scene. And so unlucky for Pimpa 1. It's a trap! I'm so sorry because he dwells into that ditch and there's actually no way out of there. So his game is over. And the 268 pilot does all he can do and he just taunts the poor. 1390 it's a trap. driver. I'm so sorry. What we have here is we have bad chat 25, so we need to be careful with that all the loader, and you need to always count the shots, which they do, so you know when it's safe to get around. And I, I'm just you know moving around here because it seems a bit odd. They have left 
this flank hole. It's a trap! It's basically just open, and this is what it does if you play aggressively over the north. If they don't commit enough tanks here, this is what they gotta do. Their RT is in trouble, and I get a good shot on that one. And Bad Chat is going for that, and it, that RT is gone also. And this kind of situation, it's 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 pretty even, 6-5, but it's still kind of, you need to be careful about not going over confidence, as I do with this Waffen Trigger. This is actually a big mistake. I still have loading time left, but I pop out too early, and the Waffen Trigger takes a pretty good shot onto me, and I just ran into this awful panther and need to take a shot or something and this bad chat is having a field day on him. But for some reason he decides that he wants to take that awful bad panther out of the game instead of me, which he would have had easily done. So now I have to deal with this Ferdinand I just try to track him. I let the Leo do the damage, but he repairs his tracks, and what I should have done, I should have tried to track him again, but I just hit the low plate and it bounces. So what we have done now, we have actually cleared the enemy base here. They only have like one RT around here somewhere, we don't know where. And it, our base is not looking too hot. You know, they have all their heavy tanks still in the game, some of them are, are near us and some of them are near our base, so I'm actually thinking of here that I might need to go around to protect the base, because I'm basically the only flexible tank to do that, because the bad chat is in, in, in the corner in, in the south, and Leo is guarding that route to our base to the enemy base and I'm just thinking that I might go over as but I do see the ISA coming for the Leo so I just turn around and think that no we need to stick together as, as long as we focus fire we might achieve something and our RT is take, has taken care of the IS-7 which is a great threat to our team so GG RT and the IS-8 is probing and Leo is calling for help and I try to do, do as much as I can uh, but I it's don't a get a shot but our other RT is getting a good shot on that IS-8 and I'm just gonna go around this rock because I'm basically one shot to everything that I face in this battle I'm just a one shot and that's the truth and I just need to be extra careful and uh, I see IS-8 the other one, and I just pop one into the side, and he's uh, he's pretty in pretty bad shape, so uh, that's good. I don't even uh, try to shoot that because they already just take care of it. But there is a Jagdpanzer E100 in that slope, probably with the ISA, but they're just not, you know, just not too bold to come up because that E100, well. He would be exposed to RT fire after we tracked him, but for some reason they don't even feel like trying. And the NFT has, still has that one RT, they got a VK, we know that the IS-8 is here and we know that the Jackpanner E100 is right here with us, so there's a Waffentrager and the VK, we don't know where they are. So the, it's there's still some some things to figure out here but the RT is doing a great job from our spot and that IS-8 is just paying price and I spot the E100 coming and I just take a pot shot because there's a hole in this rocks I just try to take a shot at it's a trap. I'm going for another shot but that, that rock is in, in, in between and I, I'm kind of reluctant to overextend uh, my welcome and that open and as you see the RD just hits there so it is just a waiting game we still have a Waffenträger protecting our base from VK and possibly the Waffentrick we don't know if they're coming back or anything but our RTs are doing a good job for us they, well basically the RTs just uh, are carrying us at the moment so this is the moment when you have like time to think about stuff and I'm kind of like thinking my options of what to do if because 
you see the Waffentrager is coming down from the south and he spots the RT. I don't get the shot on that. So the VK is also somewhere near our base. So what I want to do now is I want to go around. I know that Yakhanger is there, but I still know that there's our Batchat and the Leo are probing for him. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to go around here and see if I can find that ISA. It's a trap! And there he is. He's just going for our base. And uh, well, that's uh, unfortunate for that IS-8 that I just uh, happened to be here around here. And VK-45 is on low health and the Jack Panzer is gone. So now I know that these two tanks are around the back there. So we're gonna try to do the best we can to get rid of those tanks. We still have two Aries guarding our base. Leo and myself are moving towards these two tanks. And uh, I'm kind of thinking that maybe I should like go with Leo and just take the south road and uh, face these tanks. But you know that 4502, it can be really trollish when you're facing it. So. I'm kind of thinking, what should I do, what should I do? And usually when I'm thinking, what should I do, I just move the tank around, so it's uh, harder for people to hit me. It is something that Sir Oswald hates when we platoon, because I move that, I wiggle that tank around a lot, and I try to do that, not when I'm playing with people, but it's just something I do. But I finally decide that I'm going to go from here, and the reason is that we've lost a spot and they might as well try to uh, reach for a base and get rid of the RT. So I got two options and I chose this one this time. It might have been a different choice on the other game, but uh, what I see is the Waffen Trader and RT just softens him up. And there you see the wobble I said earlier on when the tank stops, the turret wobbles and it makes the aiming a bit harder. So now it's VK versus me, Leo and three RTs and I'm kind of thinking that we could win this game but I'm still reluctant to go towards the uh, VK. I kind of, I'm kind of hoping that he would go like towards Leo more because Leo can take a shot, I can't take a shot so I'm being careful, I'm being careful here and kind of like contemplating what to do uh, maybe a bit look cover for here and Leo is actually telling that the tank is looking at him but I still think that Leo can take a shot and I don't so I'm kind of waiting for him to shoot but he doesn't he just it's a trap. for some reason he just backs up and dies so GG so let's take a look at this stats of this game I did have the confederate and I it did 23,000 credit, but even though I shot some premium in this matchup, but let's just see. Bruiser, spotter, fighter, fire for effect, master batch number one. Check out the team score. I got a bit less, 4,000 damage. I got two, four kills and 1,219 base XP and uh, obviously the confederate. So. It was a fairly good display in a tier 10 match and I, I really have to say that it was really exciting match to play, you know, those those last moments of, you kind of feel like anxious that, oh, I really want to do right, I really want to do right decisions and when they just, you know, play out well, it's a good feeling to win a match like that. But I, I really have to compliment the artillery of this match. They did a great job. I usually, I'm the last person you see uh, making compliments about RT players, but this was th these guys were on the spot on this one, so it was a good result to us. So there you have it, E50, a German medium tank, tier 9. I think it's awesome and I definitely recommend that you guys get it. It's a great tank and lots of lots of fun to play. So this was my review of E50. I hope you liked this video and I just want to say one last thing. There's a summer or so go outside guys and I'll see ya.